Laverne is in Los Angeles County between Covina and Pomona. It's a typically small community in California. It used to be orange groves throughout the city. It was a city, I think, when we were young, of about 30,000 people. Not big. It was the most fun place you could grow up. If you knew anything about the, my family, the Rodriguez and Morales family, you knew that the Morales home was the corner of 3rd and A. My grandmother lived next door. My other grandmother lived one block away, and 3rd Street had four or five more family members. That was our little piece of heaven. I am Victoria Morales Zollinger. I'm 72 years old. I was born and raised in Laverne, California. My ethnic background is I'm 100% Mexican. I didn't even know I was Mexican. I hadn't really thought about it until I was in high school. On the day that my grandfather was buried, I had a man knock on our door and tell my mother to keep her filthy Mexican away from his white daughter. It wasn't until then that I started to do my own research into my family and I began to ask the stories about Mexicans in Laverne. My parents, well, my dad's family, did not have the same good experience all the time that we had growing up. It was a white town until they needed people to work the orange groves and the fruit groves. Then as the Mexicans migrated in, we were typically segregated to a, a portion of town and, and it seems like the dividing line was the railroad tracks. If you lived near the railroad tracks, you were Mexican. If you lived in any other part of the town, you were not Mexican. Segregation in Laverne was, was mostly in the school. When my dad arrived here, his family was forced to go to the Mexican school. While on the other side of my family, my grandmother did not allow her kids and she would not stand for the segregation of her children. I turned five years old and it was time for me to go to school. Grandma Rod, my mother, said we're gonna go register you for school. So there were two schools. Palomares in the barrio and Lincoln in the other part of town. When she got talked to the principal, he said, oh no, you have to go across the street to Palomares. And grandma, I can't believe this, said, no, my children are not crossing those railroad tracks every day. So the next day, mom went to speak to Grace Miller, who is what we would call an activist. Grace Miller and mom and I went back to Lincoln School to register. I don't know what she said, but they registered me and the next September I started school in Lincoln. So that side, because of that grandmother, had seemingly more privilege than the other side who just took things as they were handed. I went to Palomar School for the first eight years of my schooling. They told us that uh, the reason we were segregated because they didn't want us crossing the railroad tracks. But there was two streets of Hispanics on the north side of the tracks. They had to cross the tracks to go to Palomar School. Didn't matter if the train ran over them. If you speak Spanish and they paddle you, so. We grew up losing the most important thing that we could have carried forth, and that's our language. Our generation after that, they did not want to risk their own children being ostracized by speaking another language. And it's been really hard to think about the sacrifice they made so that we would never have to suffer that. On Wednesdays, we'd go half a day to Palomar's and go to Lincoln, cross the railroad tracks, for a workshop. The kids would see us and they'd start yelling, here comes the dirty Mexicans, here comes the dirty Mexicans. We used to get in fights, you know. they get a few of us, take us in a room. they get your arm, twist you like that, bend you over a table and big old paddle and paddle you. My father, Mike Morales, was a very industrious, innovative person. After World War II and after marrying my mother, he got very involved in the planning commission. He was involved in the Junior Chamber of Commerce. He became a councilman for the city. And later on, when 
it was decided that Laverne would have an elected mayor by the people. He was the first elected mayor of my city. Some say he was the first elected mayor in the state of California of Mexican descent. He was in the service, you know, he almost got killed. And he came back and he says, why should they all be over there and we should be segregated? That he was going to try and make a difference. Make quite a bit of change. They, the policeman needs to treat you different. And once Mike got to be mayor, he go up there and says, can I go right along with you? A certain, he heard about a certain police officer that was being a little rough. And that guy started opening him up. Oh yeah, says says we get him, we take him over by the airport. We hit him where it won't show and stuff like that. And boom, we come back that next day that person was gone. It wasn't a policeman anymore. By the time he was elected mayor, he had somehow taken the stigma of being Mexican out of politics. And as you watched Laverne evolve, even now, there's just so many more opportunities for everybody of every culture to be involved in this city of Laverne. I think he was the gateway person that opened up opportunity for everybody. He never pretended to be anything but who he was. You were Mexican, you were born in a copper mining town in Jerome, Arizona. You came to California to pick fruit, you were still Mexican. What else did he know? I've seen people say, oh, the friends are more beautiful. I says, you weren't here in the 40s, it was different. So I've been just, let them know what it was like so they'll know how much Laverne has changed.